first thing we're going to need is we're going to need a uh, browser here. Uh, we're going to need to do a search here for something, some good music. The XX 10 hours of music. Now, I like this one because, uh, as it says here, it's perfect for chatting, for cooking, for driving, for doing use of integrals that take a long time. Perfect. That will do it. Uh, we're going to turn the volume just so that the mood is right. So you can hear me talk. I think that's perfect. The next thing we're going to need is we're going to need a fireplace. Fireplace, U2. We're going to need, uh, this one will do. Three hours should be plenty for that guy right there. Oh great, we got to watch commercials. Um, puppies in commercials. Um, Alright, we're going to keep this window over here for inspiration. Uh, window, let's keep it afloat. Alright. And let's make it a little bit more transparent. Maybe more? Alright, I think we're good. Um, you guys ready or what? Um, well, you can't see the fire from there. There you go. You got the music, got the fireplace, got the problem. Let's do it. Um, oh, I'm also going to need some ink. I got my ink, ink program right here. Now it's all good, man. Shoot, I can't believe I get paid to do this. All right, this one, if you try it, you see it's really um, challenging. And so the reason I'm taking my time with this one is because we got some very, very special ideas for us today. And we're gonna go with the blue for our dictionary. The dictionary is gonna go like this. This is a some crazy dictionary. The most crazy dictionary you have ever, ever seen. The most crazy use of that has ever been invented. We're gonna make you be equal to um, tangent of x over 2. Now just off the bat here, this integral has, doesn't say anything about tangent, much less killing the uh, angle here and cutting it in half. There seems to be a big, big disconnect. And so where in the world does this come from? That's what's amazing about being human. You get this divine inspiration stuff like this and say, whoa, I didn't get it. I saw somebody else do it. But it's amazing. I'm a fan. And so let's complete the dictionary here, the differential of view. The derivative of tangent would be secant square of the stuff times the derivative of the stuff. Uh, so that would be d of x over 2. So therefore the derivative, the differential would be equal to uh, secant square x over 2 times 1 half times dx. The 1 half can come out and all you have is dx there. So what that means is that uh, we have I can multiply both sides by 2 and I can multiply both sides by cosine so that could kill the secant. The secant and the cosine are multiplicative inverses. So I'll slap a, uh, let's go with a 2 cosine square of x over 2 on both sides. I'm going to do that on the left hand side as well as on the right hand side and that would leave me with the idea that 2 cosine square x over 2 times du is equal to uh, the, the cosine will kill the secant and the 2 will kill the 1 half so it'll just give me with dx which is nice I want that to be part of my dictionary because I'm going to have to substitute that right in there into the dx. Right? And so I've got my dx here, the one that I need to substitute right up there. Uh, this is this is my dx, the one that's going to go right there. Okay? Not bad, right? Again, uh, you might think, well, that's crazy. Well, let's do it. Uh, go ahead. We're not afraid. This is not the afraid class. Uh, so this will give us the integral of 1 over uh, 5 plus 2 times cosine of x times dx and the dx becomes 2 times cosine square times x over 2 times du. That's not bad but you see you still have x's here and in fact it seems like we've made it more complicated. So anybody in their right mind who's not on drugs or anything would say whoa does that look like I'm going the right way? Anybody in the right mind would say probably not. And you sit back you relax and say where do we go from here? And you look at the fire and you listen to the music and you sip on your espresso and you think, wow, I love this problem, it's so challenging. And you press forward, you think, all right, I've got a tangent here, maybe I can use that from the dictionary to change it to cosines. After all, this means that uh, if I've got a right triangle where the angle is x over 2, 
the ratio that tangent describes is opposite, opposite to adjacent. So this ratio could be seen as u over 1 since there's no denominator. Uh, you see, so opposite over adjacent is u to 1. I could use Pythagorean theorem. This would be 1 plus u square, square root. From there, I can go on and read the cosine. This one tells me that cosine of x over 2, of course, it's at adjacent over hypotenuse, so it's 1 over 1 plus u square square root, duh. And I've got to square it, so this becomes the integral of 1 over 5 plus 2 times cosine of x times 2 times cosine square. All right, so I've got 1 over 1 plus u square uh, du. That's because I when I squared, that killed the square root right there. Not bad. I still got, I got use here, I got use here, but I still have x's there. Now I've got to deal with that. How do you deal with cosine of x? And so now, you look at the fire again, you listen to the music again, and you stand back and you think. Um, who in the right mind thinks that, yeah, this looks like I'm going the right way. But wait, there's more. Maybe we can use some of our famous, famous trig identities to try to... Uh, exchange this uh, cosine x into some sort of double angle or half angle formula, right? Because this is a half angle compared to the x, this is half of it. So I go to my trig identities and try to seek some answers there. Alright, so I don't know all the uh, trig identities by, by heart, but I do know some of the famous ones. Uh, for example, I know there's a famous one that goes something like... like this, uh, sine square, no, uh, cosine square uh, of x is equal to 1 plus uh, cosine of 2x all over um, 2. I know that's a famous one. And so I can rearrange this, I can multiply both sides by 2, so 2 cosine square of x is equal to 1 plus cosine 2x, and so I get that cosine 2x solving for this piece right here would be equal to um, 2 times cosine square of x minus 1 moving the one over there, subtracting one from both sides. So this is uh, a half angle formula. Well, if you look at it that way, it's a double angle formula, but if you look at it that way, it's half angle. The one on this side is half as much as that one. So I could rewrite it, for example, if I substitute x is equal to um, a half t, for example, this would say that cosine of uh, t is equal to two times cosine square of a half of that t minus one. And of course, I could replace it with x if I wanted to. This is true for any real value t. So cosine of x is equal to 2 times cosine square of x over 2 minus 1. Now here's an exchange rate. I can exchange my cosine x for a bunch of cosine squares of x over 2, which for which I have the right uh, ratios here from the triangle. So the cosine ratio, I'd read it as adjacent of hypotenuse squared. In fact, we already did that uh, over here, right? So then we get that cosine of x is equal to... 2 times cosine square. Uh, I had already done that here. Uh, or you could do it again uh, adjacent of hypotenuse squared. So that's 1 over 1 plus u squared minus 1. And that becomes cosine of x is equal to 2 over 1 plus u squared minus. I've got to combine it with this 1. So I'm going to use a common denominator which would be 1 plus u squared all over 1 plus u squared giving me a grand total of, let's see here, I've got, um, let me see if you can still see, I might need to go over here, I'm going to write on the fire, that's how good I am, uh, and I'm not afraid, watch this, so then the cosine of x is equal to uh, 2 over 1 plus u square, all that, and then on the top I have minus 1 minus u square which gives me a simplified version of that might be something like 1 minus u square all over 1 plus u square. Okay? Good. So that's what's going to go right here. And that will turn my problem into uh, my excellent question here becomes 1 over 5 plus 2 times cosine. I'm saving space here for my cosine. That's that cosine. Uh, times 2 times 1 over 1 plus u square times the differential the u. Here we go with 1 minus u square and 1 plus u square. All right. Now that gives us, let's clean this up a little bit, um, 
On the denominator, here, let's see if we can add some more parentheses here. This is a parentheses, the denominator under this term, and this has got to be multiplied times this. So the way we're going to do it is we're going to distribute that using the distributive law. So it will get distributed to the 5, and it will get distributed to this piece, leaving us with the integral of 2 on the numerator. That's that 2. I've got 5 times 1 plus u squared. That's that being distributed to that. And I have 2 times 1 minus u squared. That's that being distributed to that, killing the denominator here. So all you have is a numerator, 2 times that, and a differential of u. As easy as it sounds, that's all you got to do. Amazing. Freeland, this guy is so, uh, this substitution is, they, some people call it the sneakiest substitution in mathematics. Made famous by a guy named Bierstrass. Um, all right, let's press on here. We could clean this up a little bit. That would give us 2 over du. Let me see, I've got some constants and some u's here. I've got a 2 times 1 and a 5 times 1. That gives me a total of 7, I reckon. I've got 5 u squares, but I have to take away 2, 2 u squares. So that's going to give me a total of 3, 3 u squares. And that is a much, much more doable um, integral as compared to that one. In fact, this is just some version of the arc tangent, I can already tell. But why don't we take our time and let's do this one carefully on a new window. How does that sound? We have a 2, 7, and a 3, and a u square. Before we go on and do this one, I should point something out. Uh, if you there are a big, big family of problems like this one that can all be done using the famous Weierstrass substitution. It's, they usually, you can tell them because they have a bunch of cosines and a bunch of sines where the angles don't match, where the coefficients don't match. Those are usually good candidates for Weierstrass substitution. But when you do these, this part of the dictionary will always be the same. So the dx will always be this piece right here. So once you do a couple of these, you might want to remember this that. Maybe, or maybe you like doing this all the time, I don't know, but this part will always be the same. And same thing for cosine. That's not going to change no matter what the original problem looked like. Once you commit yourself to this substitution, you've got no choice that cosine x equals that. So that you can reuse this on any one of these problems. And you can reuse this on any one of these problems. These are consequences of the substitution. Okay, independent of what the problem might have looked like. All right, enough of that. Let's go on and... Um, I think we should uh, uh, focus on where we're at here. Uh, so this looks like a standard uh, trig substitution. So the way we think about these, let me tell you what we're thinking when we do these. We're thinking that we have some choices here. If, we have, if I have a 1 minus a sine square theta, I can easily exchange that for a cosine square theta. If I have a tangent square theta plus 1, of course, that's a secant square theta. Or I can move the one over there. So if I have a secant square theta minus one, that can be exchanged for a tangent uh, square theta. And out of those, which one does this most resemble? This one has a constant plus. See, already that eliminates these two because these have minuses. Plus something square. Obviously, this is the one that fits most. So that's the one I'm going to go with. I'm going to try to make this substitution. I want seven plus three u squared to be equal to uh, seven tangent 7 plus, whoa, easy there, plus 7 tangent square theta. Why? Because if I do that, I could factor out the 7 and have this be left over, and I can exchange that for a monomial. That's what I want from my dictionary. I can subtract the 7s, and I can rephrase this as, as the following. I want u 3u squared to be equal to 7 tangent square theta. And I can rephrase that and say I want u to be... Uh, 7 over 3 tangent square theta, or I can say u equals square root of 7 over 3 tangent theta. That's what I want for my dictionary. That's what I want. That's what I'll get. I should complete it. I leave some space here for the differentials. That's the part where you slap a D on both sides. A D on that side, a D on that side. Slap that D so you can get the differential equation. Part of the dictionary. That gives us that the differential du is equal to uh, square root of 7 over 3, that just comes out as a constant, times the derivative of tangent, which would be secant square theta d theta. Duh. This becomes, um, I can exchange this piece, which is 7 plus 3u square. According to the dictionary, I can replace it with that. So this becomes, let's go back to yellow. 
I still have a little bit of room here where you can see the screen so that becomes 2 over this piece gets replaced with that so that's 7 plus 7 tangent square theta Boom. the du, the du gets replaced with that so that becomes square root of 7 over 3 times secant square theta d theta Yeah. but wait there's more so that becomes you guys want to go into the fire? yeah let's go a little bit into the fire so this becomes the integral of uh, 2 over I can pull out that 7 and that becomes well that's the ugliest 7 ever I can pull out that 7 and that becomes 1 plus tangent square theta just pulling it out of this times I've got some constant stuff harmless secant square theta d theta this right here um, based on your basic trig identities can be exchanged for a secant square so this is a secant square which means that you can cancel that one and so you're left with something much much cleaner you're left with uh, the integral of 2 over 7 times the square root of 7 over 3 times d theta which of course is just a constant so I could pull it out integral of d theta which of course is just 2 times square root of 7 over 7 square root of 3 times theta plus a constant which of course I can go back to the dictionary and try to figure out what theta was from the dictionary so let's go query the dictionary again uh, the dictionary was I'll make a little space here for my dictionary over here I'm looking at the dictionary right here keep your eye on I know you're mesmerized by the fireplace but keep your eye on the dictionary here tangent theta over here is equal to u times the square root of 3 over the square root of 7 right so therefore theta is equal to the arc tangent of u times square root of 3 over the square root of 7 that's going to go right here so my final answer well not really my final answer but my next answer would be 2 times the square root of 7 all over 7 times the square root of 3 times theta which of course is arc tangent of u times square root of 3 all over the square root of 7 plus c not bad huh we got the integral done now it's just a matter of substituting back your variables I think u we can get from the previous screen where was my u? u was right here tangent of x over 2 uh, the famous Weierstrass substitution so this becomes 2 times the square root of 7 over 7 times the square root of 3 arc tangent of tangent of x over 2 times the square root of 3 all over the square root of 7 plus c maybe you can clean it up a little bit simplifying of course that's for the birds I'm way too sexy to simplify anyways it's a very 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 nice problem to enjoy on a Sunday morning with some good music fireplace and some timeless ideas oh my goodness this idea is timeless the Vaishra substitution out of nowhere divine inspiration Probably an angel came from heaven and told Vyastras, hey, sh I think you should try this. Maybe. I don't know. Anyways, it's a very, very nice problem. You can do a lot more of this type of family problems using exactly, exactly the same, same idea. We'll see you guys here. Peace.